The final missing piece of information on the upcoming NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card has been leaked. I am talking about the core clock frequency. With this information, now we can calculate the RTX 4090 teraflops performance and compare it to the current generation RTX 3090 to learn just how much more powerful this new graphics card will be. Additionally, I have an update on the RTX 4090 release date and price, as well as the benchmark charts for 4K and 1440p gaming. Speaking of learning, this video is sponsored by Skillshare the best online learning community that I have been using for a long time, so it makes me very happy to have them as a sponsor. There are thousands of inspiring classes on Skillshare, everything from photography and illustration to graphics design and freelancing. On Skillshare, I am learning from the best YouTube content creators such as MKBHD how to become a more successful YouTuber, and so far it is working great for me as my channel has gone from getting a few thousand views per video to hundreds of thousands. And the learning journey never ends as new classes are added every week. Join me and thousands of others at the link in the description below and the first 1000 of you will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. Now back to the video, let's start with the specifications. RTX 4090 will be based on the AD102 GPU chip manufactured on TSMC and 4 node that features a maximum of 18,432 CUDA cores and 96 MB of cache. But RTX 4090 will have a cut-down version of the AD102 chip with 16,384 CUDA cores. The full AD102 chip is reserved for RTX 4090 Ti or possibly even a new Titan graphics card. Still, it is a huge increase compared to RTX 3090 which features 10,496 CUDA cores and just 6 MB of cache. The memory will see a minor upgrade from 24GB of 19.5Gbps per second G6X in RTX 3090 to 24GB of 21Gbps per second G6X in RTX 4090. The power consumption will increase to 450W from the current 350W on the 3090, that is a lot of power and heat. But at least it looks like Nvidia is planning to use it well, as the latest leak suggests that RTX 4090 core clock frequency is set to be 2235 MHz base, 2520 MHz boost, and 2750 MHz actual maximum boost. To put this into perspective, RTX 3090 base clock is 1395 MHz with 1695 MHz boost. So, this alone is a massive improvement. If this information is indeed correct, then it means that RTX 4090 has a theoretical performance of 82 teraflops. That is more than double compared to RTX 3090 with its 35 teraflops. However, this does not mean that we will see double the FPS in games. I still stand by my expectation of a roughly 80% improvement over RTX 3090. If anything, this is yet another piece of the puzzle that confirms that it is possible for RTX 4090 to get such a big improvement over the previous generation. But more on that in just a minute, right after I tell you about the release date and price. Initially, Nvidia was planning to reveal the RTX 4000 series graphics cards as early as July. However, it looks unlikely that this will happen as most leaks are now stating a much later launch. RTX 4090 in September or October, RTX 4080 in October or November, and RTX 4070 in November or even December. The mid-range RTX 4060 could be revealed at CES 2023 in January, but that is a big maybe. Reportedly, this delay is happening due to Nvidia overproducing the current generation RTX 3000 series and now sitting on a lot of graphics cards as the demand from crypto miners as well as gamers has dried up significantly in the recent months. If you are looking for a new graphics card right now, then you may have noticed that you can buy any model you want at a fair price, for the most part. Some GPUs are still overpriced in my opinion. 
But my point is, the prices will only get better over the next weeks as more X crypto mining cards hit the secondhand market and Nvidia's partners try to sell the remaining RTX 3000 stock before the next generation arrives. I have revised my RTX 4090 price expectations. Taking into consideration what I said above about the second-hand market flooding with RTX 3000 cards, as well as lower demand from gamers, I doubt that Nvidia as well as other companies will be able to raise prices by a lot, if at all. According to the DigiTimes report, both Nvidia and AMD are trying to cancel a part of the wafer orders at TSMC, who is manufacturing the chips for their upcoming GeForce RTX 4000 and Radeon RX 7000 graphics cards. TSMC, however, is not having any of it. The best they could do is offer to delay the deliveries by one or two quarters. Alternatively, the companies have to find another customer to take the wafer orders allocated to them. This means that Nvidia will likely have an oversupply of RTX 4000 GPUs as well, possibly forcing the prices down. So, unless another crypto mining boom happens, which looks highly unlikely, I would say that we can expect decent prices and availability for the next-gen products in 2022 and 2023. But still, I can't see Nvidia setting RTX 4090 MSRP below $1500. Now let's talk about the gaming performance, starting with 4K resolution. Please treat the following data as a speculation, although it is based on the leaked performance targets coming from within the Nvidia team. RTX 4090 performance at 4K will be insane, 184 FPS average across 12 games. It is very welcome, as 4K 144Hz monitors are getting cheaper and 4K 240Hz monitors are expected to hit the shelves later this year. 4090 should get around 95fps average in Cyberpunk 2077 on high-quality preset. Cyberpunk is the most GPU-demanding game on the list and is the perfect example of how the future games will perform. After all, the next year's lineup does have some visually impressive games that will certainly require a lot of GPU power. But if you are looking to play competitive games at high frame rate, then it will also be possible at 4K. Rainbow Six Siege should be able to run at close to 380 FPS. Borderlands 3 represents an average AAA game. RTX 4090 should have no problems providing an ultra-smooth experience with over 120 FPS. And expect 160 to 200 FPS in older but still relevant and good-looking games. That is 180 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest preset. Over 160 FPS in Horizon Zero Dawn on Ultimate quality and over 200 FPS in Death Stranding, providing that the CPU and game engine can even support this kind of frame rate. I don't want to take up a lot of time talking about the possible 1440p RTX 4090 performance, because I doubt that this GPU is relevant at this resolution, but do let me know in the comments if you think otherwise and I will reconsider it next time. Anyways, I expect to see a 12-game average of 300 FPS at 1440p, with even the most demanding games such as Cyberpunk running at close to 180 FPS on high preset, which will give you room to crank the preset up to Psycho and switch on ray tracing. Speaking of ray tracing, I don't have any solid numbers to share, but it is rumored that RTX 4090 will have a much better performance than RTX 3090 in that department. So maybe 2022 will be the year when RTX ON will actually become relevant. RTX 4090 will be a record-breaking graphics card in more than one way. The performance, the 450 watts of power consumption, and most likely size. Rumor has it that 4-slot coolers are coming. Personally, I would not want to use a card that produces so much heat. But what about you? If you enjoyed this video, then why not give it a like? It was I, Vadim. Until next time.